super excited for vlog number two about the Bear Pour Art Kit. And for those of you who are asking, yes, this kit is coming up really soon because we are launching, don't tell anyone, but probably this Friday. So those of you who are on this nerdy Jackie channel are getting the first look of me testing products, what goes behind my mind about this and that, and why I chose this over that. And of course, if you have specific questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. We are back with more product testing. We have more clay, we have some super glue, and I just kind of want to see which ones can harden faster but still give us a good flexibility. So I've never seen this one before, but I'm very familiar with hardy clay because it is technically a Japanese clay, which is absolutely wonderful quality, but it has been taken over here in North America. So you can see here, it says Patico. There you go, Patico, Japan. So this is a good quality clay. I really want to test it and see how well it does. But one of the things we're also working on is designing a stand so you can dry your actual pieces while they're hanging so that you don't have to worry about them dripping and kind of being all over the place. So this is a custom made stand that we designed, but we already see some of the flaws in the design here. Let me zoom out a bit. And we really want you all to be able to put your stand like this and hang your pieces on. But you see, that's, that's exactly the flaw that we saw is that there's not really much of a stopper to stop it from moving too much. So we really have to hyper extend it quite a bit. You can't put it like this. You have to hyper extend it. First glance, it's not too bad, but it's a little wobbly. And you can put your pieces on here. Hang on, let me show you. With the little keychain, and they can dangle here with a little piece under it so that they can drip properly. So that's the idea, is your piece can hang dry proper. But otherwise, this is a pretty good first prototype. It will be exclusive to this kit because we design this. If you are making any kind of other hanging type projects, you can definitely put them on here. But we're going to be experimenting. Wow, Burb is really, really loud. But yeah, we're going to be experimenting. Probably in this video, I will wait until the second prototype comes in and we're going to compare them. Although I don't hate this one, I have to be honest, I don't hate it but we'll need to see how else we can improve on this design. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but this does collapse. So it lays flat-ish <laughs> on your desk, so it doesn't need to take up space all the time. So you can put away in your drawers or back in your box or wherever you want to put it. And that's definitely one of the things I really wanted to do. I wanted the stand to be collapsible and you can use it for other projects. So if you do have any other bear pour kits or if you're making resin jewelry, or any of that stuff, you still have that stand. So it's not just a one purpose thing. You could use it for other projects and you could put it away and it won't take up space. Like what do I do with it now? It really is just foldable. And now for the hardy clay. Now, one of the downsides of this clay is that it does not have a resealable uh, packaging, unfortunately. So we obviously are going to be providing a resealable packaging because I just don't like packages that don't reseal. So it's unfortunate, but we're gonna have to make it up as we go. And I love this clay. I've used it a long time ago. It is super airy. Hang on, this is, this is the downside. The second you open it, you need to seal it so that it doesn't dry too quickly. Here's what it looks like. Let's get a felt over here. And it has a good enough moisture on it that it makes smoothing it really good. Now, I know that we, I did receive super glue, but we are not going to be using super glue because we don't want your hand kind of getting in there. So nay on the super glue, but I do have a school glue. It's an all purpose glue, and that should be good enough to adhere the clay to the bear. And also I wanted to interject to say that the reason I'm going back to basics is because I want this kit to be accessible for everybody. I do realize that my second craft kit was a little on the advanced to medium side, but I love nonetheless that many of you grains chose to challenge yourselves and I really truly appreciate every single support. So I'm like, you know what? Let's make something more easygoing, accessible, and also easy on the hands because sometimes polymer clay can be really rough on the hands in order to knead it but air dry clay is super soft. However, if it's not good enough, then we're going to have to check out more glue options. So this video is basically going to be us looking at different kinds of clay and adhesives to make sure that it sticks to your bear or cat or whatever creature you turn it into. <laughs> So this bear is the one that got no glue with the clay and you can see it just comes off without even trying. There's zero force put on for it to come off. So unfortunately, this is a nay. 
So you can see here, it just comes off super easily. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this clay, like I saw, and I'm going to start adding little pieces on the face, some jackets, etc. but we're going to make sure that we put enough glue. So let's make some bulging eyes. And I'm gonna put some over here and some on the bear. And since these glues are usually non-toxic, it should be okay to touch with your hands. There you go. I'm gonna put our eye here. It's gonna have two big eyes. So one eye here and the other eye right there. So it's like, oh my goodness, this is some crazy things you're experimenting with, Jackie. And crazy it do be because it was too much. If you want to make big eyes, go ahead and make big eyes, but don't make them protruding too much like I did. Obviously, I'm testing the limits of everything, but you learned from my mistake. Let's also add some glue to the back over here. Spread that stuff like so. And I'm gonna add some little spikes in the back of the head. So we're gonna see and test our limits with different pieces and how well they hold. Next little spike, voila. This is looking ridiculous, but I love it. And it is getting a little messy, but I kind of like it. It reminds me of sculpting with earth and clay. Now, in the previous one that we tried, we'll put some B-roll over here for y'all. I did try to put a heart on the character's chest and it just fell off really easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little heart-ish. <laughs> it's not a heart. I promise I know what a heart looks like, but let's, let's just pretend this is our shape. And we're gonna put some glue here. And we're going to go ahead and put it on the character's chest. Doesn't necessarily have to be a heart, but it could just be an extra layer of belly so the character has a little bit more depth. This is the most ridiculous character I have seen to date, but okay. <laughs> I mean, listen, so far it can still stand, so that's that's good news for the bear. These things really stand. Just make sure you balance it better than I do. And let's pretend this is a potion. I'm just going to be pushing the limits here to see what we can and can't do. And I'm gonna put some of the glue over here and we're going to put it in the bear's hand like a saw. There we go. I don't know why the bear's holding a potion, but we're testing the limits here and we're gonna see how far we can get with just adding stuff and different layers and thinnesses and thicknesses. I mean, that's the whole point of testing things is we really need to make sure that we're testing different things, even if we're not going to do it that way, just to kind of have an idea where we're going. So as you can see here, I'm putting a thin coat, kind of like a cape, to see what the limit is and also how thin and how flexible this is going to dry. But also, if you want to take this to a completely different level, for those of you who have the previous kits, you can also use epoxy clay and make way more solid pieces. But of course, that's going to make your pieces a little heavier because air dry clay and epoxy are two completely different heaviness. And also, epoxy is just a little bit more advanced versus air dry clay. And since I know many of you are also gifting these, not just for yourself, but also to some little ones, so air dry clay definitely makes more sense for almost everybody. But if you're advanced, use your advanced stuff too. And of course it's summer, so someone is outside <laughs> mowing the lawn. But we're going to do a second bear with a little bit of sanding, just micro sanding, like a saw, and like a saw, to see if the glue will actually hold on better for sanding versus not sanding. Just because it is a very smooth surface. It's very, very, very thin sanding. All right, this looks good. And we're gonna add some glue here. Tapa, tapa, tapa. And we're gonna make the one with the sanding look a little bit more evil. I don't know why, <laughs> but you're gonna have evil eyes. Of course, this is very rough sculpting. I'm not doing this to be a masterpiece. These kind of look like pretty cool eyebrows, but no, these are eyes. There you go. So I'm gonna have the eyes like a saw and some on the chest. Tapa tapa. Look at that. Everything's pointy on this bear. <laughs> the design, the chest plate, all of it is pointy. And yes, the glue's getting a little messy because I'm kind of putting a lot of glue and we're just gonna test the limit. Of course, if you wanna smooth it out more because this is air dry clay, the base is definitely water. You don't have to worry about oils or anything like that. So, so far so good. And you will also get a potion to hold, like a saw. It's kind of a different shaped potion, but a potion nonetheless, voila. And voila, so we're going to leave these hardened for a couple of hours and come back and check them out. All right, so the googly eyes on this one came off. There was really not enough to hold onto, so that we know. Now let's do the other test, which is the bottle. Okay, that's pretty good, that's good. How about the chest? Very nice, look at that, good. Okay, I'm happy with, I'm really happy with that. I think the eyes were probably protruding a little too far off the face, which is why we're going to check this next one. So the eyes are kind of a little bit more flat over here. Let's check. 
Yep. Pretty good. Chest mark. Also very nice. Bottle. Yep. Okay, we're doing good. I feel like there was another one here. This one's hanging on. You can hear that. You can hear me pushing. Very nice. Very nice. And then this one. Oh, good. That's great. I'm so happy the school glue is it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay, you have to really make sure that you do sand, put the glue, shove that stuff on there. This is looking great. There's so many possibilities. Three weeks later. So we are back. I don't know if y'all remember, but we had this contraption thing. Like, my goodness, hang on. What is going on here? What is going on? Why are you doing this way? Okay, it's so that way, that way. There you go. We have this contraption. We need to zoom out for that. My goodness. This is pretty big. But we did have this contraption so that we can have our bears kind of dry hanging on top. But we got our second prototype. Well, more than second, but our actual prototype. This one is way more compact. Here, let me remove this one. And it's way more solid. And it is pretty heavy, too. And I quite like it. It does stand in place. It has enough space for a few bears. Look at that. And another bear here. So we do have space for the bears to kind of hang around. No, no, I'm saying, but I'm. <laughs> Let's bring our felt under here. Voila. And it is about the size of the tray where you can let them kind of drip right onto. Now, the good news is you're not just getting one tray, you're getting two trays. So the tray to pour on and the tray to let them drip onto. And just to be very clear, this project will allow you to make six custom bear pour charms or figurines or however way you want to decorate them and keep them. And you are getting a lot of paint. You're getting eight of these. You're not just getting tiny ones, you're getting big ones, full size. The question is how practical is this going to be all together? This is what we're going to have to find out, how messy we're gonna get. Don't worry, we're going to be having some gloves in there. We're going to have a mat for you to get messy on so you don't ruin your desk. We're, we're, we're thinking of all the things. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a pour and I'm going to try two more cups. This is the cup I tried. This is the cup I initially had in the first video that I did this. So they're both pretty flexible. We'll just see which one pours better. All right, since everything is basically white, we're gonna start over here. Let me put this in here so I don't make a mess everywhere else. I've chosen to go with these colors. I know these are not necessarily, well, this one's not color directly that's going to be in your kit. Hang on, I'm interjecting again. <laughs> I know I put my felt in order to not make a mess, but you're also going to be getting a sheet to put on your surface. So you don't have to worry about that. We're providing a sheet. I got you. Stay tuned for Friday's video on the main channel for the entire set of what we're getting. You know what? Maybe gold is not a good idea because gold and yellow are too similar. Now I'm debating. And then I have this one. I feel like we might need a pink or a red. You know, we're going dark. <laughs> We're gonna go with these colors for now. And regardless, we're going to make sure that y'all get five compartments. So you can choose between one, two, three, four, five, or six. Well, not six, but up to five colors that you could choose. I'm gonna make sure we shake a shake to make sure the colors are even everywhere. And I think I'm going to put the red in the middle, like so. And I'm going to put the lighter colors on either side. So we're gonna put this tropical blue and the gold. The gold is a little thicker, so I'm a little worried that it's going to be the slowest to kind of go down. The way I'm measuring is kind of looking down here, so I definitely know I don't have enough red, but also knowing the center might actually pour much quicker. I'm gonna experiment and see over here. And then the dark blue on the complete other side. Voila, there we go. So I'm gonna prep this on the side because I'm not gonna need it right away, but I want it to be standing ASAP. And as always, we're going to start upside down. So not fully upside down, but we wanna make sure that we get the little crevices. So you see, we have the, the tropical blue is kinda of coming in hot. Red, not so much. Dark blue, not so much. But okay, let's get the undersides first. So we're gonna go, oh my goodness, tropical blue. My goodness. So we're gonna get all the undersides, the arms behind over here, under the chin, do little sweaties. Under the neck, shoulders, leggies. This is a really cute color combo. And now, this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. I'm gonna put my cup away, bring this, and I'm gonna attach my bear right on top. There we go. So now I should be able to pour as I please. So let's try and get that going. So I'm gonna go like so, on the ears, on the head. This is actually more complicated than I thought, hang on. Maybe I need to hold it in my hand first. 
I think I might hold it first. I'll probably have better control this way. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I think that's way better. Okay, we're gonna do this. Make sure we get the front. Turn you around. Get the ears. So far, so good. These ears and the back of the head. Voila. Now, I think I got everything. No, I did not. I did not get the potion. Voila. This is gonna take some practice. <laughs> I need to get the proper angle on the potion. Come on, potion. There. And if you want to get a little extra, you could just pour a little bit more on the head. That's going to give us a pretty cool effect. Nice. That's looking pretty cute. So now we can put the bear up and we could do some adjustments. Voila. Very good. Very, very good. All right. Now we're still working on getting a tool that is going to be slim. But for now, I'm just using my sharp pointy thing. Here, let me show you. We're gonna get much closer. And the definition between the legs is just not working. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take my sharp pointy. See, we just had a bit of a, an opening here. We removed whatever bubble was there. And I'm gonna turn you. And I feel like the separation between the arms also need to be there. So I'm just gonna kind of move my sharp pointy thing up and down, wipe it, go up and down and wipe until we can get that arm separation right in the middle. There, you see it's starting to happen. Very nice. Look at that, it fixed itself. And I don't think it's necessary on this side. Let's check the back. Gonna twirl you, gonna twirl you. Man, the colors are so pretty. Okay, gotta stop moving. And I feel like we could do a little better on this one here. So I'm gonna take again my sharp pointy thing, keep doing this, wipe, go again, and wipe until I get that separation but I don't think we're going to be able to because the potion is kind of in the way oh you can see I stabbed the potion so I don't think we're gonna get much of a definition here because we do have an item but we could definitely do a little bit more here right on the underarm there and we are getting quite a bit of a drip so I'm just going to try and help it by scraping the excess at the bottom and on the other foot so far so good all right we're going to let this dry for 24 hours for this next one I went ahead and mixed some orange because I'm feeling orange orange is one of my favorite colors ever I may have put too much <laughs> Maybe I got too excited with orange. And I'm going to go with green because I'm thinking Ninja Turtles. So we're going to go with green. I may be putting too much of everything at this point. I'm just still experimenting. And we're going to go back with this blue because I'm absolutely in love with this one. So we're going to go with this lighter blue over here. And then we're coming in with pink. So we're going kind of going pastel, but with kind of green. So we're mixing warms. Oh my goodness, I definitely mixed too much. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour on this tray and then we're gonna transfer it over there once we get the underneath parts as best as possible. I feel like pink is definitely going to be dominating here, but we're gonna do our best to make sure that we get as many of the other colors as possible. So we're gonna get under the neck, under the arms, in between the leggies. My goodness, this is a really cute color combo. Under the cape is going to be very important. So I'm gonna turn you around like a saw and we're gonna need under that cape. Voila, under the arm, in between the leggies. Very nice. Under here, under the ear. My goodness, all the under parts have to go first. And I messed up my hand, but that's okay. That's half the fun. And now we can go ahead and start pouring from the top. So I'm gonna get the ears first, cause why not? Ears, top of the head, the eyes. Ooh, the eyes are gonna be challenging on this one. Let's turn you around, voila, on the spikes top of this head. I may have gotten too much on the cape. Probably got too much on the actual handle on top here, but I'd rather know that I got everything. And definitely pink is a little too invasive, so let's see if we can get the other colors to come down. Oh, by the way, I wanted to let you know I'm pouring this through a camera lens, so you'll definitely have way better control when you're not doing this over a camera lens. Oh no, I overdid it. There we go. Some of the green and orange are coming in. So I'm just gonna pour. Well, this ear needs more. Voila. Okay, let's put it on the tray. And for that, I'm just basically going to move this here, move you closer up. And we're just going to attach this one like a so. Now we can go ahead and do some of the adjustments. In both occasions, these are absolutely adorable. So the drips that we got at the bottom, they're not wasted because in your kit, you're going to be getting tiny canvases so you can make matching canvases to your bear. If you want to be extra specific too, you can technically also finish your canvas and then glue your bear on top so it becomes a piece of tiny artwork of a bear on a canvas. But yeah, these are not gonna go to waste. 
like mine here. I mean, they're still pretty cool and satisfying to remove, but you do get tiny canvases, so why not? And now I'm just going to spend some time removing some of the excess in between the arms. So I'm just removing and wiping. Oh, no, there you go. This is part of the fun process. I find this part really calming and relaxing because you're just basically adjusting different bits and pieces so that the details do show a little bit more. And of course, my burb feels the need to chime in. There you go. So I'm gonna come back to this every few minutes and double check until it starts hardening a little bit more. And here they are 24 hours later. You can see that the paint has shrunk a little bit, which is absolutely phenomenal. It takes the shape of whatever we put together and made, which I'm loving. The gold is absolutely gorgeous. This is phenomenal. I love these colors. I kind of wish the back colors were at the front, but I mean, that's what paint pour does. You gotta kind of let it go and let it happen as it happens. And we can see that the front is still, look at that nicely secure on there, which is great. And the next one with the pink, I, I called it. I said there was way too much pink and I was a little worried that the eyes wouldn't show, but again, the paint did shrink around it and we can see all these little details a lot better. Now, the problem with some of mine is that I do have a cold environment. So some parts of the paint do dry quicker than others. So make sure your environment is indeed nicely done. Now, of course, you can go ahead back with the paints and paint on extra details. So if you want the eyes to be black, you could just take the black paint and paint that on. But otherwise, these are looking super shiny and they don't need a glaze. They're just shiny naturally. I love the fact that these paints are not matte. Beautiful. So again, I'm super excited to reveal everything that's going to be in your kit because we made this as fun and as accessible as possible. Not to mention, there's also going to be a mystery pack of something that will be revealed again on Friday. But in the meantime, leave any questions you have. I'm super excited. My cheeks hurt right now. I'm so excited. And I really do appreciate all your absolutely wonderful words of encouragement. I really wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for you, Grains. I'll see you soon.